This video has been requested 903 times, so we are doing Wyckoff Theory today. Let's go. All right, traders, the big event is here, um, Wyckoff Theory 2020. This video has been requested many times. I did some videos on Wyckoff a long time ago, and we're coming back, so let's get into it. If you are familiar with Wyckoff, or if you are not familiar with Wyckoff, that's okay. If you are not really familiar with this, I would recommend going to check out some of my older videos on Wyckoff theory. Now, what we're looking at here is classic accumulation. And I have to say that these two figures, oh, these two figures here are from Binance, because they did a wonderful job at uh, showing Wyckoff theory. We see five phases, A to E, and we see a lot of events that occur. And if you want to know the name of each of these events, they're right here and there. Now, why does this occur? That's a question that should be, you know, in your mind. Just learning all of the names of these events and learning the names of all these phases and the personalities of these phases, that's important. But you got to know the bigger picture. You have to know why this occurs. Why this occurs during consolidation, after you can see an uptrend to consolidation to a downtrend, is that the market is attracted to liquidity which means that the market's going to want to stop out and liquidate as many traders as it can before moving in its desired direction. This is efficient. Now what we see here is the beginning of the consolidation range, right about here, and then we see that if any traders had shorted, they get stopped out there or liquidated. Now if any smarter traders had waited, they short here, and they put their stop loss right above here, what ends up happening? Those two get liquidated or stopped out. Now at this point at the UTAD, this may look like the absolute most bullish time, especially when it does that. So many traders at this uh, node right here, this yellow dot, a lot of traders are probably very, very bullish. They're thinking that this is just, you know, previous resistance becoming support, price can rise in phase C. But that's the trick that the market plays on you. Phase C is typically the most violent phase with high volatility and a large drop in open interest. But what ends up happening is any traders who had bought because they had shorted and failed here and they think it's just gonna rise, they get a bad surprise there. Now these are some of the terms that we see with distribution. If you wanna pause the video, you can take a look. Now those were both phases of accumulation distribution where we get a reversal. This is what you're going to see when you get a continuation. An uptrend to consolidation, continued uptrend with reaccumulation. Redistribution, you're gonna see a downtrend, consolidation, continued downtrend. Okay? Pause the video here again if you want to uh, study to your heart's content. And here are some of the terms that you can also study to your heart's content. These are just additional terms. The previous terms do apply as well from the other slides. Five phases, and what, what's the personality of each of these phases? I've talked about this before, so if you want, again, you can pause this video and go read these, but this isn't gonna be the main focus in today. Main focus today is going to be open interest, practice, and being able to detect whether you're an accumulation or in distribution. All right, so I'm throwing you guys in the water with this one. Whether you are comfortable with Wyckoff or not comfortable, hopefully you know how to swim, okay? So what we see here is consolidation after uptrend. That means one of two things. Either A, we are going to see distribution, or B, we're gonna see reaccumulation. What do you think it is and why? This is, hopefully you already decided which one. This is, this, is, this is gonna be distribution. What we see here is a buying climax denoted by BC. We then see an automatic rally. We then see a secondary test and then we get consolidation. Now, why do we know that this is a buying climax? Well, check volume at the bottom of that chart. You can see that the highest amount of buying volume or volume on a bullish candle occurred around here. We then get some tests down, some secondary tests up, and we get the range. Now, if any traders had shorted anywhere around here, they're probably gonna get stopped out here. Any traders who hadn't been stopped out there, they get stopped, they get stopped, up, stopped out at the UTAD here, okay? And then we get signs of weakness. So at this point in time, especially when the market was up here, this may have looked very, very bullish, but this is really just the final stage of Wyckoff theory before the new trend emerges. Signs of weakness is a really important stage as well. Let me go back and we're gonna go to where it says signs of weakness. Where are you? Here we go. 
Perfect. Occurs at the end of phase D. Price consolidates at or below support before beginning markdown. Markdown being a downtrend. So we begin to see signs of weakness around here, and then the price really falls. Okay. What was the outcome of this distribution? A lot of death and destruction for the longs, as you can see here. The market's going to play tricks like this um, all the time. And if you are aware of Wyckoff theory, you can actually be willing, if, if you are confident enough, you could actually be willing to even put limit orders above here when you see these kinds of patterns and hope that, you know, you get filled and you get a beautiful fill for a lovely downtrend there. Because if you can put limit orders where a lot of weak traders are going to get stopped out, then you're probably going to get filled at very good prices. If you just try to market in or market out, you know, whenever you feel like it, you're probably going to end up market selling, you know, something like this and then putting your stop loss above here and then you're in profit here and you're happy and then you get stopped out. And then you're mad because the downtrend already began. All right, sad. What's not sad is the five phases of, of open interest. So remember that we have five phases with different personalities in each of these phases. Now, this is something that I created to look at how can we adapt open interest, as you can see here, to Wyckoff theory. Now, with open interest and what it is, it is the number of contracts long and the number of contracts short. A rise in open interest, new positions are being added. A fall in open interest, positions are exiting, okay? So remember this or take a screenshot or just pause the video and let's go in. You're looking at a five minute time frame of a consolidation after an uptrend. Take a look specifically at open interest. Now you do not have to apply every single stage of open interest to this. I just want you guys to focus on where does open interest really fall and why does that occur and what does that mean? I'm gonna answer all three of those in five seconds. Okay, first, my first question was where does open interest really fall? Here and here is the answer. Um, I also ask, uh, what's happening? Well, what's happening is we get an ST, a secondary test here, above many highs on high volatility. Then we get the final violence stage of the final stop loss hunt in a UTAD here with a very rapid drop in open interest. This is occurring because any weak shorts who are probably going to get liquidated or stopped out before the true downtrend begins are getting liquidated or stopped out before the downtrend really began. And what we can see is during phase B, phase B remember is back here, I know I'm retracing my steps, you can see a rise in open interest because this is showing us that positions were beginning to be added. This I think is probably the time from here to about here where we had a good amount of shorts and longs entering. And that's when they begin to get uh, slaughtered, as you can see here. So they enter around phase B, they get stopped out in phase C and somewhat in phase D before the trend begins. And price just dumps. Now typically what you're gonna see with phase E, meaning the beginning of the downtrend in distribution, is a rise in open interest. But what we end up seeing is a massive drop in OI in phase E. A massive drop in OI in phase E on high volatility is typically just going to lead to a retracement or a reversal. So it's not, I mean, I have to be careful with what I say here, but it's not always the case that this downtrend is going to continue with this. This is actually not a terrible spot to think about uh, short-term buys. As you can see, just so much volatility and it's such a drop in open interest, that the market does need to, not need to, but the market does tend to retrace in the other direction. And then you can actually even see here the beginning of another Wyckoff phase. Boom. And you can see that specifically with where is open interest massively dropping. Not massively here, but where is open interest dropping on this down move, as you can see here. And uh, you can see that then price rises after that. You're looking at a one day chart and I want you guys to apply open interest theory with Wyckoff in a beautiful combination. What do we see here? Is this accumulation or redistribution? What's going on? So as I slowly answer that question, first thing I want you guys to identify is the selling climax. Um, don't look at open interest for this, just look at price. Where do you think that the most selling occurred really on this chart? I would say here. These candlesticks here are really beginning to show a selling climax before we establish consolidation. Now, when we establish consolidation in phase B, we see a slow rise in open interest, which is typically what we're gonna see as traders are beginning to bet on the market either going up or the market going down. 
Now, wherever they bet, let's say that many of them think that the market is going to likely fall, they get stopped out there <laughs> right before the market does fall. Now, what we have to ask ourselves is where is a large drop in open interest occurring? Really, where is the largest drop in open interest occurring in this entire consolidation phase? If you're ever confused if something is going to be accumulation or distribution, I want you to really look at where is open interest most dropping? Because that's gonna show you where a lot of weak hands are being lifted. Now, I think that the answer is here. Why? Well, it's the largest red candle in open interest, and we go from about what looks to be about $880 million, a million contracts to 800. This may have been something like a 10% drop in OI. Um, so this is really telling me that this is probably going to be the spring. Remember that the spring is the final move that occurs in accumulation before that. What we see is this massive drop in open interest, and then we begin to see price just moving up on high volatility. Why does this occur? Well, we flushed out so many longs. We've made it look very, very bearish, making it great for the whales to buy at lower prices than usual, and then price rises, as you can see there. So when is something gonna be accumulation? When is it gonna be distribution? And I had this question in my Discord, and I honestly had a hard time answering it. So I wanted to give three check marks, three things that you can check to say, hey, is this accumulation or distribution? First thing to look at is, have there been more stop loss hunts of the longs or the shorts? Are you seeing more secondary tests of highs or secondary tests of lows? Are you seeing a larger drop in open interest when a new high is formed or when a new low is formed? Second, is price making more wick lows or wick highs? Check the candlesticks. Typically what you're gonna see is a lot of wick lows when the market does eventually move up. And I had a good example of that. Where is it? Um, yeah, here we get wick here and price falls. You know, wick here and price rises. Some large, very, very large wick here. Wick here and price falls. Wick here and then price rises. Wick here, as you can see. And, oh, this is just a beautiful example right here. The largest wick, really, that occurs here occurs at the UTAD, right there, right before the downtrend begins. So you're gonna wanna look at the wicks to see really where are traders being stopped out on high volatility and then the price goes back to consolidation. Final thing you need to look at if to see something is rather accumulation or distribution. Remember this guys, for this last thing that we see which traders are trapped for check highs and lows, this is a way, if you're able to successfully do this, you can find whether a move is a stop loss hunt or a genuine move to find if something is the ending stage of accumulation or distribution or just a continuation of the consolidation phase. If you believe, and you can look at open interest for this as well to see where traders are trapped, let's look at this consolidation here. Where do we think that a lot of shorts are going to be trapped? Well, we know that potentially a good amount of them may have sold the breakdown here. Open interest rise right there, and it may be trapped right there, and then price rises. And then we also know that potentially some traders had been beginning to be trapped here. Well, why do I say that? Well, you see an open interest rise and price consolidating, then falling at the end of this open interest rise. This could have been longs entering. Why is this important? Well, price tries to go higher here than consolidation and fails. Why? Well, this may have occurred because so many longs had bought here. They want to break even. Price can't go any higher. So what does price have to do? Price has to flush out the trap longs like that before rising. So that is another trick that you can do. I would say that's probably one of the more advanced parts of Wyckoff analysis, which is looking where traders are trapped. I wanna end this video on a probably the best example of the entire video, um, be best example of this uh, uh, video today, which is this. This is probably my favorite because it's just such a clean portrayal of what you wanna see with volume and price. I think that it's reasonable to say that a good amount of longs were trapped near these highs. We had plenty of opportunity for longs to buy here, here, here and here. And if you want, you can check the volume profile to see just where they're buying. But I, I'd be reasonably confident that we have a lot of buying here. And when the market falls, we have a lot of trap longs here. That may be a reason why after these signs of weaknesses and eventual falls in phase E, price has a very hard time going back to consolidation. Because if it did, any trap longs would probably begin to sell off at break even. That's gonna be it for this video today, guys. I hope that you got something new out of Wyckoff or learned how to apply Wyckoff theory. Just to recap what we have talked about today, you look at a consolidation phase in a different kind of way. You wanna look about, look about 
look at consolidation phases to see what is the most efficient move that the market can make before continuing to move higher or continuing to move lower. And with everything that we've talked about today, I think that the one takeaway that's most important is it's when things are looking the absolute worst that price tends to rise. And when things are looking the absolute best is when price tends to fall. I'm talking about consolidation. Do not apply that to downtrend or uptrend, okay? In consolidation, when things look very, very bullish, something like you know this, without this wick, you, you wouldn't know any of this, but just this, this is looking quite bullish. You know, an uptrend already occurred, high bullish volume. Yeah, why wouldn't price go higher? This was actually the optimal time to sell, right? And when things look just incredibly bearish, just crazy bearish, boom. I mean, come on, downtrend, just continue bearishness. How could price rise? That's when you get this. The market's gonna continue to do moves like this, and really it's this theory that's going to help you come out unscathed or potentially with a profit. With that, happy trading.